We represented an individual recently. He, with his girlfriend, uh, were approaching her residence. Uh, he was driving. He had uh, very little to drink under the legal limit. And upon approaching the house, his girlfriend entered the house, which was her residence. And he was outside, at which time he hears a scream and he hears a shot and he immediately enters the residence and notices at the top of the landing an individual pointing a gun at his girlfriend. He recognized the individual who was actually a friend of his, but nevertheless, this individual had pointed a gun and based on my client's prior observations, observed that the gun was fired. He immediately ran up the staircase and grabbed the individual with the gun, grabbed him by the gun, was able to get the gun away from him, used the gun to strike the individual, the aggressor, and subduing him, and further struck him with his own hand several times to further assure that he would not get up and cause you know, further potential uh, deadly results. Apparently, upon an investigation, there was a bullet lodged in the stairwell that was within several feet of my client's girlfriend, the reported or potential victim of this event. My client and the victim called the police. Uh, police came out, my client feeling very strongly that he was well within his rights in the law in providing self-defense of another to the property and his girlfriend. Here again, disarmed the individual and disabled the individual. He sat in the police car for approximately an hour, hour and a half, and was interviewed by the police. Unfortunately, the police viewed the situation differently, notwithstanding the fact that my client's statements were consistent with the victim and that the party, the aggressor, actually um, was out cold and when brought uh, around, didn't even recall firing the gun. His fingerprints were on the gun. There was really no question that he did fire the gun. And the facts of the case were not really disputed. District attorney ultimately charged my client with first degree assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and serious bodily injury based upon the gash in the victim's head caused by his being hit with the gun and the other strikings of the, to the face of the victim by our client. The case went on for eight months. Our client was required to post approximately a $50,000 bond, was charged with DWAI, which is a drinking offense in Colorado, was put on a very strict monitored supervision, and after making a $50,000 bond, nevertheless was required to report weekly on issues related to his alcohol use. Over an eight month period of time, we were able to approach the district attorney and ultimately reach a result resulting in the dismissal of all charges. The district attorney, when trying to explain her position in response to my inquiry as to, well, if my client would have shot this individual with a gun, would he have been charged? The answer was no, that would have been self-defense. So my inquiry was, you're telling me that by disarming the individual without a gun and subduing him, that that was an appropriate assault charge. The district attorney informed me that she felt by my client striking the individual in the head, he had used excessive force. We thought that was absurd. The prosecution offered numerous felony charges with probation, of which we turned down. They offered numerous misdemeanor charges. They offered deferred judgments, which would result in a dismissal. And after eight months, all charges were dismissed, including the motor vehicle driving under the influence charge. A point that's well worth restating is how imperative it is to not make statements at the scene, not to attempt to explain your situation, notwithstanding the fact you believe you're 100% innocent. In an assault case that I referenced with regard to self-defense, our client 100% wholeheartedly believed he had done nothing wrong. What he ended up doing wrong was making statements to the police and as opposed to saying to the police officer at the scene, I'm represented by counsel, 
we're more than happy to provide you information once my counsel is involved, he decided to try to defend himself. This is a very bad decision under almost 100% of the circumstances. Notwithstanding the fact you may upset the police officer, you aren't going to get charged in a serious case just because you have an unhappy police officer. What will happen is, if you discuss the case in detail without the use of an attorney, you may get charged where you otherwise would not be charged, and in that circumstance, you have a very happy police officer. So it's imperative at all stages, commencing when you're first contacted with regard to any form and investigation, is to immediately contact counsel, seek advice, bring your counsel into the fray immediately and allow the attorney to act as a buffer between you and the inquiring uh, law enforcement authorities. And this is an absolute. This is not something that should just be employed when you believe you're innocent. Because a factor that's involved, the most difficult cases to defend in many cases are the cases when someone's innocent because there's no middle ground. Those cases get litigated, and you want to make sure that the evidentiary landscape is in your favor to the degree you can cause that.